This is my Voron Trident. It started out as a cyborg kit that we finished building late last year, and it had a very short life. This wasn't due to any issues with the printer itself, but one I inflicted by misaligning the two-piece stealth burner breakout board as I was clearing out a jam. When I powered on the printer, it completely killed the Fisac Spider controller. While it always intended to mod this trident, this was a little sooner than planned. Last April at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, Northprint 3D sent me home with a tube hotend, and Fabrico gave me an FXD extruder from Advanced 3D Printing to do some testing with. I knew right away that I wanted to install this into the Trident, but I didn't know which tool head to use. One night while asking some questions in the Armchair Engineering Discord about Archetype, I was shared the GitHub for Jaguar, a fully SLM tool head that looked unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Since then, Jaguar has been renamed to Takeoff, and a little over a week ago, I finally got this beast installed. It's without a doubt the wildest setup I've ever ran, and I'm very excited to see what this configuration is capable of. In today's video, we'll be diving into this toolhead, go over what it is, take a deeper look at the hardware I went with, and of course, we'll do some printing. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high-quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf-inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. The mastermind or madman behind Takeoff is Burgo, who was extremely helpful with answering all questions I had throughout sourcing and assembling the toolhead. As mentioned, Takeoff is a fully SLM toolhead. For anyone not familiar, SLM stands for Selective Laser Melting, which is a form of additive manufacturing that melts metal powders together, forming a solid part, in this case out of aluminum. This makes the toolhead extremely rigid, and currently, the tube hot end has no cooling on the heatsink as the aluminum parts help to transfer heat away from the cold zone. I'd gotten a chance to test out PCBWay's SLM printing previously, and when I reached out to them, they were happy to sponsor and produce all of the SLM parts needed. This consisted of the main body, extruder plate, fan ducts, and belt clips. Virgo even provided me with the needed technical drawings so that they could tap out all of the required holes. The parts turned out gorgeous, and while I have experience using various forms of polymer 3D printing, it's mind-blowing to see what SLM printing is capable of. While I got into this project fairly early on, Takeoff has since gone through a pretty massive overhaul. The revised version of Takeoff, Takeoff V2, comes with some really nice quality of life improvements, and even better, there will be kit providers which will make it much more accessible. This toolhead is intended to be used with Tube, and can use both the air version that I have or the conduction variant. For anyone not familiar with Tube, it is a monster hot end created by Luke's Laboratory. The air has a 42 millimeter long melt zone and uses standard size heater cartridge, and the conduction has a 52 millimeter long melt zone and uses super volcano heater cartridges. All components on it are rated up to 500 Celsius, it uses standard V6 nozzles, and the combination of materials used, the shield that wraps around it, and its six screw M3 top mounting point makes it incredibly rigid. I'm pairing this with a 100 watt 24 volt heater cartridge and a PT-1000. My initial plan was to use a 0.4 millimeter CM2 nozzle, but I ended up later swapping it out for the tungsten Basel nozzle that we covered last year. The current version has two extruder plate options, giving you compatibility with a wide range of extruders. The extruder I'm using is the FXD or fixed gear extruder from Advanced 3D Printing. This extruder's body is made entirely of machined aluminum, and it uses beefy monolithic steel gears. It's a high-performance extruder intended to work with anything from standard to highly abrasive materials. I paired this with their FXD-designed NEMA 17 stepper that is manufactured by LDO. This is a 28mm long motor that uses a hardened steel pinion meant to be able to take plenty of abuse. 
I spoke quite a bit with A3DP and they let me know that lots of testing has gone into coming up with this specific motor configuration. For bed leveling, takeoff is intended to be used with Beacon. We dedicated a full video to this eddy current surface scanner and I would argue that this is my favorite bed leveling option out there. Combined with the updated firmware that allows for contact, when set up you get crazy quick accurate meshes and automatic Z offsets. I'm using the latest Rev H which has a unibody design, built in accelerometer and even higher thermal compatibility. Last but certainly not least is cooling. Takeoff uses two massive 3628 fans. I reached out to Luke from Luke's laboratory to get his feedback on fans and he highly recommended going with Delta fans giving me a specific model number to order. My initial plan was to go with a tool headboard as I've fallen in love with the cleaner wiring and simple swapping or replacing that comes with them. However, the Delta fans running at 12 volts made this near impossible given existing boards so I ran all cables from the tool head down to the controller. As for the controller, I replaced the Fisec Spider with the Big Tree Tech Kraken. We covered this board some months back and it has more than enough connectivity for everything we need now with plenty left over for future upgrades. For assembly, I believe there's a build manual being worked on for Takeoff V2, but for my version, I used the CAD along with some feedback from Burgo on the best way to assemble. The recommended order of assembly was main body to carriage, then hot end, followed by extruder and belt clips, then fans and beacon. For screws, it's primarily M3 socket heads with a couple of flat heads. I used Loctite for all the screws that threaded into the SLM printed parts to hopefully prevent them from coming loose. When it came time to attach tube, I was told to use thermal paste at the very top where it makes contact with the tool head. I used arctic thermal paste and installed a PTFE tube to act as a block and prevent thermal paste from getting inside of the hot end. One thing I missed when sourcing parts was the metal tubes needed for routing the belts. This is a 4mm outer and 3mm inner stainless tube that was easy enough to source from Amazon. I had to cut it down to size so I designed and printed a simple jig that combined with a clamp and hacksaw only took a few minutes to cut. Most of the assembly was fairly simple and by far what took me the longest was the wiring. I had so many ideas for how I wanted to route the cables. I initially purchased a handful of different size sleevings and tried to hide all of the wires. This sounded good but it left me with a massive umbilical cord that looked hideous. So I redid the wiring a few times and ended up with a much simpler solution. I still don't love it, but I was able to design a simple retaining clip that bolted onto the FXD extruder, which helped tie everything together and give a bit of strain relief. I also found a mod for the back right motor to let me pass all the wires down into the electronics bay. Under the hood, the wiring is still hideous, but I have more upgrade plans, so I'm not spending much time unlocking anything in just yet. The other part that took a while was getting the config dialed in. Part of this was that for me, I wasn't just installing the tool head, but also doing a complete controller swap. While I spent a lot of time on this, I did have some help. Turtle Crawler has been helping out with takeoff and reached out knowing I was building one of these tool heads. He let me know that on Kraken, the 12 volt rail with the two deltas would be too much and would cause the Kraken to shut down. So he recommended limiting their power to 80%, which I did and I've had zero issues running them. I also ran into some issues with Z-Tilt and meshing. For this, my buddy Steve from Steve Builds hopped on a call to run through some of the questions I had, which was super helpful. I also had to switch to sensorless homing, and while I found a very reliable homing sequence by lowering the motor's current during the homing process, Steve provided me with his Trident's homing override settings that were much better than what I had come up with. If you haven't already subscribed to his channel, I will have links available in the description. Much of the printing I've done so far has been calibration prints, from pressure advance to retraction and of course some max flow tests. This is where I got myself into some trouble. A3DP sent over some of their glass filled ABS, so I decided to run my first max flow test with it. I used 245 Celsius as the temp based on the range on the spool, but usually print at 260 Celsius with ABS. The range I went with in Orca Slicer was 20 to 50 cubic millimeters per second. Well, everything was going well up until about the 30 range when I started to notice a hit to the layer consistency. I decided to let it go further to see when gaps appeared and at 35 cubic millimeters per second, filament completely stopped coming out, so I killed the print. 
What I didn't consider was just how much force the FXD extruder had. Normally when pressure is too much to extrude, the extruder just skips steps. Well, with this setup, it was able to shove quite a bit of additional filament downward leading to a pretty nasty clog. With some effort and disassembly, I was able to get everything cleared, but decided to swap from the 0.4 millimeter CM2 to a 0.5 millimeter Basel nozzle. I also switched to regular ABS, raised temps to my standard 260 Celsius, and killed the fans. The Delta fans produce a ton of cooling, which is great for overhangs and bridging, but not so much when you're trying to run some flow tests. I then ran another test from 30 to 50 cubic millimeters per second, and I was able to complete it without any issues. This did feel like the top end of what I can achieve, and with added cooling and variations in filament, I set the ABS profile to 40 as my cap. Given that I'm using a standard heater cartridge, I was very happy with those results. I also ran a few input shaper tests. Surprisingly, the limitation I'm currently having is in my x-axis. Ignore the header on the graphs, my x and y direction is swapped due to the orientation of beacon on the takeoff toolhead. While the MZV recommendation for y is 8k, x is currently limited to just north of 4. I went around tightening the printed parts up to see if it made any difference, but the results were very similar. My plan is to investigate further, as I would love to get up to that 8k range on both axes. In the printing I've done, the extrusion has been super consistent and I haven't taken the fans above 20% with ABS because of just how much air they move. The biggest trade-off with this toolhead setup is weight. The combined NEMA 17, FXD, tube, and aluminum parts with fans is certainly not light. My plan to counter this is to increase the machine's overall rigidity. I plan to start with CNC motor mounts and eventually I would like to go with an all-wheel drive setup. I'm also going to swap these stepper online motors that came in this kit with Kraken motors from Devil Design and LDO. These are beefy motors with 30 teeth pulleys and they have built-in thermistors for easy temperature monitoring. The plan is to use these with larger 9mm belts. I'm also going to keep my eye out for a compatible toolhead board so that I can clean up the wiring. Lastly, I may end up adding an additional fan on the toolhead for cooling the extruder and hot end area. While it hasn't been necessary for ABS or ASA, based on the heat being generated, I have my doubts about PLA not softening between the extruder and hot end. So far, I'm really enjoying takeoff and the hardware configuration I went with. This is well beyond the scope of a build I would typically do, but I've learned a ton in the process and can't wait to see just how far I can push things. While this certainly doesn't make sense for everyone, for those building a high-end printer looking for peak performance, or using their printer for industrial applications, this is one hell of an option. And that has been Takeoff. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you had. For anybody interested in finding out more about the Takeoff Toolhead or any of the parts I used in this build, I will have links to all of them available in the description. This will not be the last time that we see this printer and this toolhead in action. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.